Mithil raised the mighty trident Trishula into the air and slammed it down in front of her. The ground shook and a swirl of black and white smoke burst up around it. She wasn't able to transform it to the same degree she had when she possessed the multiversal orb shard, but it still grew to be taller than her and its middle prong became much broader. Tarsa simply cracked her knuckles, not even bothering to wield a weapon. Ordis wasn't sure what powers Tarsa still had without the orb in hand, but he hoped her lack of a blade for this battle was a decision made out of arrogance. Tarsa also had no armor on, but what remained of Mithil's armor left her head, stomach, and much of her right limbs unprotected. He hoped Shiva's weapon of destruction would be enough to balance out her limited shielding. Mithil let out a fierce battle cry as she charged towards Tarsa, making the mountaintop rumble as she ran. Tarsa pushed one leg back, ready for the strike, and Mithil thrust the trident towards her. Tarsa snatched the ends of the blade. Ordis was excited to see a look of concern on Tarsa's face as she was pushed a few dozen feet back. Mithil slammed her into a stone spire. Her body cracked into it, but she managed to push back enough to not be smashed through. She thrust her arms forward, shoving Mithil away. But the God Queller did a backflip, landed on her feet, and leapt forward again. Tarsa batted the trident aside, but Mithil still tackled her shoulder right into Tarsa's stomach and smashed her through the stone. Mithil landed on top of Tarsa and punched her full force in the nose twice, before Tarsa smashed a fist up into Mithil's stomach, sending her shooting into the cloudy air above. Through the haze, Ordis could just barely see Mithil slam into the top of the crimson barrier around them. But she must have gotten her feet against it and thrust off, because she fired back down through the mist towards Tarsa. The furious god Overseer flung herself out of Mithil's path, landing a few feet back as Mithil stabbed her weapon into the ground. She swung it up through the stones, sending a wave of black blade energy towards Tarsa. She stepped aside, dodging it, but Mithil followed that with another five swipes, all shooting blades towards Tarsa. Tarsa leapt around them all, but one managed to cut through the edge of her thigh. She gritted her teeth, clearly holding back a show of pain. Ordis couldn't help but cheer audibly, but that just infuriated Tarsa even more. Thank you for showing me your limited skills, God Reaper. Now let me show you my far superior set. She tapped the runes on her arm and her hands and feet ignited in orbs of red energy. She leapt up and ran as if the air had step holds for her. Mithil swung her trident, but before it was mid-swing, Tarsa reached her, caught it, and punched a glowing fist into Mithil's head. She was flung back but held on to Trishula, as Tarsa did. Mithil used the grip to pull herself back up, but Tarsa just punched her in the head again. Mithil gripped Trishula as tightly as she could though, and while her torso fell back, she thrust a foot up, swinging it around Tarsa, right into her head. Tarsa's body turned with the kick, but Mithil then swung her same leg back and kicked Tarsa's head the other way, making her let go of the trident. Tarsa stumbled to the side, and by the time she was fully upright again, Mithil was swiping the trident at her head. She raised a hand to block it, but Mithil was ready for that and smashed her forehead into Tarsa's nose. She did that two more times before Tarsa could even think to react. She finally swung a hand up to catch Mithil's forehead, but as she did, Mithil pulled back the weapon and thrust the trident right through Tarsa's side. Tarsa shrieked out in pain and fury. White and black veins started spreading through the stab wound. Tarsa shoved Mithil back to get the trident out, and then stomped forward and punched Mithil across the face as hard as she could. Mithil's head swung with the blow, but she wasn't even knocked off her feet. If those red orbs were supposed to elevate Tarsa's impacts, they were clearly not doing as much as she'd hoped. Mithil just laughed. By the gods, here I was thinking you might actually be difficult to face without that orb. My mistake. Tarsa unleashed a furious battle cry and started pounding her fists against Mithil's face. Mithil marched back as she was struck, but wasn't even bothering to block. She just laughed as she was hit. Tarsa stepped up into the air and thrust a foot into Mithil's face, forcefully enough to make her nose spurt out blood. But she just flipped back through the strike, landed, and kept on chuckling. As this occurred, Lorna walked up beside Ortis. Well, I don't know how you knew this would work, Ortis, but it seems Mithil truly is a superior fighter. Ortis nodded, still in some shock. Yeah, I seriously didn't think it'd be this easy. Tarsa really isn't that tough without the orb. Tarsa clearly heard that and stopped striking Mithil, furiously turning her head towards Ordis. As soon as she did though, Mithil let a god queller gauntlet grow over her fist and she hammered it into Tarsa's head. She was hurled backwards and smashed through another three stone spires before rolling into the red light barrier and stopping. 
Her face was bloodied, but then Ortis noticed the purple runes on her right shoulder started spinning on their own. All the cuts on her, even the wound from the God Queller enhanced Trishula in her side, started rapidly healing. Thankfully, before she even got back to her feet, Mithil was on her again. She drove Trishula right into Tars's chest. The God Overseer just barely caught it, but Mithil was shoving her right into the barrier and inching the weapon farther and farther towards her heart. That is, if Tarsa even had one. Tarsa kicked at Mithil's legs trying to do anything to get her away, but Mithil just kept pushing. This is what you get for threatening those I love. The Imperium Pantheon dies with you, Tarsa. My current Pantheon may end, but I will never die. Especially not by the hands of one of my own descendants. Does it mean nothing to you that you are of my blood? Mithil leaned her face closer and snarled. It means less than nothing. I would mourn if someone I cared for died. When you are gone, I will do nothing but celebrate. Tarsa's eyes suddenly flashed with a cold gaze, as if she'd ever so briefly died. Then, the fury returned, full force. She pulled one hand off the trident and snapped her fingers. To Ortis's horror, the multiversal orb suddenly appeared back in her hand, with no barrier around it. Red lightning exploded off it into Tarsa, and she was able to easily pull the trident out of her. She grabbed Mithil's breastplate and hammered the orb into her face once, twice, then a third time, sending Mithil soaring backwards so fast, the wind nearly knocked Ortis off his feet. Mithil was smashed all the way to the other side of the light barrier and collapsed to the ground. Ortis yelled out, Mithil! Tarsa, you really are a coward! Tarsa floated through the air towards Mithil as she stuck the orb to her side. The dead may think of me what they will. I only need the living to fear and respect me. Mithil picked herself up, still determined as ever, and charged back towards Tarsa. She leapt into the air at the god overseer, trident first, but Tarsa snatched it with ease, grabbed Mithil by the neck, and ripped her away from her weapon. She flew down and slammed Mithil into the ground hard enough to make a crater in the mountain. From the ground, Mithil pounded her fist into Tarsa's face, and it clearly hurt, but not enough to get the cowardly goddess off her. Mithil then reached her hand towards the orb, and that was enough to make Tarsa leap away into the air above. She then shot a beam of crimson light from her hand right into Mithil's chest, making her cry out in pain as she was drilled farther into the stone. Ortis raised Suriastra. Classic arrow! Full power! He released, and the arrow struck Tarsa directly, but only shoved her back ever so slightly. Meanwhile, Ortis was close enough that the explosion knocked him backwards. Luckily, Lorna was strong enough to stay on her feet as she ran towards Tarsa with a God Queller enhanced knife in each hand. She leapt up, but the God Overseer easily thrust a foot into Lorna's chest and sent her smashing back into the ground. Luckily, it had distracted her from Mithil, who leapt straight up, grabbed the orb, and tried to yank it away, but Tarsa grabbed it too. White lightning burst off it onto Mithil's fist, and she made a white blade spring from the top of her forearm. She thrust it right into Tarsa's stomach. Tarsa yelled out in pain again, but more red lightning sprung from the orb and she smashed her fist into Mithil's collarbone. It was a hard enough hit to send Mithil soaring back to the ground once again, leaving Tarsa with the orb. Mithil was growing tired, but she picked herself up all the same. Orb or not, Tarsa, I will kill you. Ortis has already proven to everyone how much better this world is when people are not under your vile rule. We all deserve better than a cowardly god like you in charge. Tarsa raised Trishula and swung it at Mithil. The bolt that burst from it was so fast, Mithil barely dodged. It sliced right through the rocks beneath her, making stones blast up into Mithil's face. Tarsa saw Lorna readying up to leap at her again, and without even looking, aimed a hand and shot a beam of red light, colliding with her head and smacking her back to the ground. To think my own descendants would be so ungrateful... I bred six generations of gods just to ensure you were born. Had your parents not escaped me, you would have been raised to understand how perfect your lives could have been under my rule. Now you tried to take this world from me, you killed my only ally from my old world, and you dare to insult me, even allowing a pitiful mortal worm to insult me. When I make new descendants, I will ensure to raise them myself, so they do not disgust me as much as you. I may even simply wipe this whole world away and start over. 
You say this world deserves better than me, but I say they don't deserve a ruler as mighty as I. Nor do you deserve my mercy. My offer for your survival is rescinded. You all die here today. Tarsa burst through the air towards Mithil and pounded her in the head again. Ortis wanted to aim up his weapon, but didn't know what good it could do. Archons, Archons, please, what do I do? Do I sh shoot the Devastator Flame again? The Red Archon spoke. She will she likely, likely be expecting, expecting that. that. I, I would not recommend it. it. Then what do I do? I, I won't let her win. We can't. There was a deafening pause, but then the Red Archon said, There is one thing you can do. I am not in favor of it, but it is better than Tarso winning. You should know, though, it will cost you dearly. As long as Mythil and my world live and Tarsa is gone, I don't care. The Archon explained, and without hesitation, Ortis sprinted towards Tarsa. Mythil was on the ground, struggling to pick herself up as the God Overseer marched towards her. Tarsa spun Trishula in her hand. I rather enjoyed having a variant of Shiva by my side. Like Zeus, I may have to find another of him out in the multiverse to aid me in my future plans. But I believe I will keep this weapon you've brought me. Fitting that a tool you tried to slay me with will be your own end, God Reaper. Before she reached Mythil, Ortis skidded to a stop right between them, aiming a full power arrow at Tarsa's head. You already tried that, worm. What do you think it will do this time? Even if it only distracts you long enough for Mythil to get up, then that's good enough for me. Even with the odds stacked against her because you took the coward's way out and used the orb, I still believe she can beat you. Mythil will be the hero that rids this world of you. Tarsa snarled. No, she won't. Nor will you be here to see her fail. Goodbye, Archons. Tarsa thrust the trident forward and pierced it right through Ortis's chest. More so than the blades, Ortis felt the shriek of horror from Mythil behind him. The flaming arrow in his hand started to wither, but before the fire vanished, it turned black and swirled over Ortis's arm, turning it stony and demonic. He suddenly stepped forward towards Tarsa, crying out in pain as the trident pushed farther through him. He thrust his demonic arm down and put his hand on the multiversal orb. The Red Archon's voice spoke through him. Be gone. Black lightning burst from the orb, and the device vanished. Tarsa thrust her hand to her side, grabbing at nothing. What? Where is it? What did you do? Ortis's arm returned to normal and dropped. Blood spilled from his mouth as he said, We, we forced you to fight fair, coward. A steaming hand snatched Tarsa's, wielding the trident, and snapped it sideways. Her hold of the weapon released as bones cracked under Mythil's grip. Ortis collapsed to his side with the trident still through him. Black bubbles and smoke were spreading from the blade across Ortis's body. His eyesight was going fuzzy as blood poured out of him to soak the ground. Even still, more than his own pain, he could feel the fury pouring out of Mythil as she tore into Tarsa. The God Queller grabbed both Tarsa's arms to hold them back and once again started slamming her forehead into Tarsa's nose over and over until her cowardly opponent fell to the ground. Mythil stomped her heel into Tarsa's stomach twice, then dropped down and started pounding her in the head over and over. Tarsa thrust up an arm to grab Mythil's throat, but Mythil caught it, created a God Queller knife in her hand, and stabbed it through Tarsa's arm. Immediately, white ash started spreading through Tarsa but her purple runes spun and stopped it from spreading farther. Still, that wasn't enough to save her from Mythil's fury. Tarsa tried to block as Mythil slashed the blade across the God Overseer's body over and over, but she barely stopped a single strike and her healing was not keeping up. The anger in Tarsa's eyes faded until all that remained was fear. Mythil raised the knife, about to slam it down into Tarsa's forehead without another word. Ortis's vision was almost gone, but he was glad he'd at least seen Mythil finish Tarsa. He'd get to see his world saved. Instead, the last thing he heard was Tarsa yelling out in terror. Wait, wait, wait! Without the orb, I am the only one that can save your mortal! Ortis desperately wanted to see Mythil's knife thrust down, 
but she paused. Then, everything went black. Ortis was in an empty void, as he had been before meeting the Archons, but this time, there was no light to be pulled into. Instead, he just heard the voice of the Red Archon say, We are not pleased with this outcome, child. It will likely not take long for the traitor to find the orb again. Know that it will not be the last time you hear from us. Someday we will take physical form, and you will see us again. For now, enjoy having the love of someone who cares for you as much as the God Reaper clearly does. Goodbye for now, Ortis Phanemo. Ortis's eyes burst open and he sat up, gasping for air. He looked around him and immediately saw Mythil's tear-filled face next to him. She wrapped him in a hug. Oh, thank you, thank you. I never would have forgiven myself if that didn't work. Ortis hugged her back, confused. He noticed that the pain in his chest was nearly gone and seemed to be fading more and more each second. He took one hand off Mythil and grabbed his chest. He felt blood, but the trident was gone, and so was the wound. He also noticed that he felt strangely much stronger than ever before. Mythil was hugging him tightly, but it didn't hurt in the way it sometimes did. He then finally noticed the glow emanating from his arms. He raised and stared at them, thinking what he was seeing had to be wrong. Mythil finally leaned back from him. Hovering over his arms were Tarsa's god overseer runes. He whipped his head around. He saw Lorna sitting nearby, but Tarsa was nowhere to be seen. He looked Mythil in the eyes. I don't understand. What happened? She paused for a moment, then nervously said, You know I wanted to kill Tarsa as badly as anyone, but not as much as I needed to save you. Wait, Tarsa's still alive? Mythil gave a slight, embarrassed nod. Before I killed her, she made a deal to save her own life. You saw how her god overseer abilities healed her during that battle. Well, with the multiversal orb gone, the only thing that could heal a wound from Trishula was for someone to have her abilities. If I let her live, she agreed to leave our world, never return, and give the god overseer abilities of our world to you. Ortis's eyes widened even farther open. I'm... I'm a god? Mythil smiled. You're not just a god, Ortis. You're the overseer of all the gods, of our whole world. I know it was selfish of me to let Tarsa live to save you, but it also means you won't live out a mortal life, then die. You get to live as long as you like, to make sure that the peace you've brought to this world remains. Tarsa may not be dead, but our world is saved, and you get to ensure that it stays that way. And you get to stay with me. Ortis stood up and looked at his runes. He felt the anger of knowing that Tarsa was still alive somewhere, but that was only one of many emotions swirling through him. Mythil stood up too, still looking unusually concerned. Are you... are you angry? I know Tarsa living isn't ideal, but... Ortis stepped towards her, wrapped his arms around her more firmly than ever before, and kissed her. He didn't know if it was the new abilities coursing through him, the thrill of his world being rid of Tarsa, or just the embrace of the woman he loved, but that kiss was the greatest moment he'd ever experienced. Time stopped as they embraced, and Mythil clearly enjoyed that she could now hold him as tightly as she wanted. Even the ever-sarcastic Lorna remained quiet and let them have this moment. When they finally released their embrace, Ortis grabbed her hands and looked into Mythil's eyes. If we can find a way to track down Tarsa, we will. We'll do our best to make sure she never hurts any other world again. But for now, let's go let everyone know that the Imperium Pantheon no longer has control over our world. <laughs> you did it, Mythil. We're all free. The three heroes descended the mountain to find that the last of Tarsus Chimera had been taken care of. 
Everyone gathered to hear Ortis recount the tale of Mythil's heroic battle and how Tarsa was defeated. The cheers went on for hours. The rest of Tarsa's pantheon were taken to the Greek underworld to be imprisoned in Tartarus until they could be convinced to be at peace with the other gods and a better influence on the mortals. The world wasn't instantly healed of its divisiveness, but unity was in the air. Ordis spent the next few months with Mythil by his side, helping spread the word to all gods about what Tarsa had done in merging all their worlds together. He helped as many of them as possible see that they all needed to share this world and their titles as gods of various elements. Some took more convincing than others, but slowly over the next few years, the gods started living in more harmony with one another. And, in effect, so did the mortals that looked up to them for guidance. Ortis learned how to use his new god overseer abilities to travel outside their home dimension and led a few parties of gods to try and search for Tarsa. But the multiverse was a big place, and eventually they just focused on what good they could do for their own world. Many more legends are told of the time of great peace that came under the guidance of Ortis Venemo, and his message of unity is still widely spread. It isn't known by most if Ordis is still the god overseer to this day, or if Mithil and Lorna are still alive all these thousands of years later. Some say that after a few thousand years, they chose to go into god sleep until their world needed them again. Others say Ordis Fenimo decided their world no longer needed an overseer. They say he found a way for both him and Mithil to give up their abilities and live out the rest of their lives happily as mortals until they died peacefully together. What is known, though, is that they lived many, many happy years together, and that their world has never fallen into an age as dark as when Tarsa ruled over it. Thanks to a woman born with the intention to control and kill deities, and a once cowardly mortal turned godly hero, a world became unified like never before. As Parvel Markopoulos concluded telling his friends and classmates at the Trismegistus Academy this story, around their twelfth consecutive campfire, they were all in awe and desperate to still know more. They asked him what he believed was true of this story. He gave a wry smile and said, Well, I might actually know a little bit better than most about what happened to Mithil and Ortis, thanks to one of my oldest living relatives. Not that I look that old, right Parv? The kids all jumped out of their seats and turned as a broad-shouldered, long-haired figure walked up from the darkness into the light of the fire. He carried a tray of spinach pastries to share, munching down on one, before he continued. I can't tell you where they are, god to god confidentiality and whatnot, but don't you kids worry, Mythil, Lorna, and that not-so-little and not-so-mortal Ortis are doing just fine. And their kids are, too. And so concludes the saga of Mytholethal. But these characters will be returning in the not too distant future in more Multiverse Tales episodes. So don't worry, you won't be missing Mythil and Ortis and even Ares for too long. I am going to be starting a series now revolving around the Trismegistus Academy. I'm super excited about that one, and there are actually two previous episodes about that academy that if you're new to the channel, you might want to go and check out. But when I start the series, I will be making it so that it can be watched from the beginning without any previous knowledge. Because that's going to be turned into a book as well. Just like Mytholethal. I'm going to say it'll take at least a month for me to get Mytholethal prepped for book release. I'm going to be doing it differently than how I did Vigilance, which will hopefully speed up the process. But you know, there's a fair amount of editing and formatting and all that kind of stuff that I got to go through on top of my other usual work. But speaking of books, the book for Vigilance, which this isn't what it officially looks like, this was the first proof copy I ordered, but the book version of Vigilance officially goes on sale one week from today. I will have it linked everywhere, I'll put up a community post when it's officially out, but get ready because it's coming. October 14th. I am super excited to finally have this going out, but besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with is a quote that feels very fitting for me right now, which is that the universe will never let you succeed at something long term that isn't meant for you. And the reason that feels very poignant for me right now is that the pop culture videos that I'd been doing as the core of this channel for a while had started to get less and less views around 
I mean, mid last year, but especially in January, February kind of area. And that was a little bit scary, but it's also what prompted me to start working on the original stories. And now I'm so much happier doing that. It feels very much like when I was doing Illustrator React back in the day, and I realized that I didn't really like doing it, but it was also making me most of my income on this channel. I kept making episodes even though I wasn't enjoying it that much for the last few, but then views on it started to fall off anyway. So I finally sucked it up and decided to stop doing that series, and within a few months of that, the pop culture videos took off. And for a while, I was way happier doing those instead. And now today, I almost look at the pop culture videos as though they were kind of my warm-up for the original series stuff. Like I was building the skill set I needed and my core audience who enjoys my writing and art for what I'm doing here now. Anyway, huge, huge thank you to everyone who's been following the original stories. It really does mean a lot to me seeing all the encouraging comments of people enjoying them, and I'm very excited to see how the book launches go. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Starseed Psyche, Episode 3, then on Monday we'll finish The Summoner's Beasts. Goodbye.